Good morning, everyone. Uh, Archbishop Richard Gagnon here, and this is our Friday morning report. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, I have a special guest for our Friday report today. We're going to talk a little bit about prison ministry, and uh, that is something we don't often uh, talk about within the general context of the church, but it's an important part of the ecclesial life of the church indeed. So I've invited uh, a special guest uh, to be with us, Greg Dunwoody. Greg is a parishioner at uh, St. Catherine Tekakwitha Parish, and he's had quite a long involvement in prison ministry within the Archdiocese of Winnipeg. So I just want to welcome him this morning to the Friday Report. Welcome, Greg. Thank yeah. you for joining you. us today. Yeah. It's great to see welcome. you. Uh, usually yeah. I see you at the parish, but I also see you at the Catholic Center here. It's yeah. great. So um, in the prison ministry, um, that is a topic that... Uh, you know, it's an important topic, but not often referred to much. Uh, generally speaking, within our parishes and our Catholic people are not really maybe aware of it, other than the fact that the church does have an outreach in prison, in yeah. prisons, yeah. Uh, in institutions. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you could, we could start today just by sharing a little bit about your own uh, uh, involvement in prison ministry. Like, you know, how long have you been involved in it? And... Uh, and maybe when you're describing that, you might say a word or two about how did you get into prison ministry anyway? So, because okay. uh, for many people, yeah. it's a bit of a mystery. What do you do in a case like this? So, yeah, yeah go ahead. Yeah. Well, I uh, got involved in prison ministry and I uh, didn't think it would be so long, 19 and a half years. Okay. Uh, the first place I went was to the Winnipeg Remand Center. I often would say many of the people going to prison uh, it's it's the same people who haven't resolved some issues in their life, yeah. and uh, a little bit of a sense of uh, we don't have a lot of people out there doing a lot of bad things. It, there's people who often in their childhood stories, and they share that then with me as a chaplain. Right, you see the things that might have caused them to be the way they are, mm -hmm. and then the repeat offending is I haven't re really resolved it. Uh, most of my time, uh, 18 years, was out in uh, Headingley Correctional Center. And that's where people go when either they're not being released on their own recognizance, but they are having a trial and they're held in custody, mm -hmm. or they are sentenced for two years less a day. And, and so that's where, after a while, I really get to know some of them quite well, and they know me quite well mm -hmm. to, with, with time. And also, uh, if they go into provincial custody, we're a huge province, and so a number of them are from up north. Uh, some even maybe find themselves in the city, but they're actually from another province or from Nunavut or northern communities. Right. And they have no relatives or families. So sometimes it's a case of being able to come alongside of them and just introduce to them that should you have family coming in, uh, we might as a chaplain be able to advocate for them to come and we'll have one or two visits that are special, at a special time or time convenient. So chaplaincy, while we will do religious services in the province, a lot of it is one-to-one -one work, getting to know the fellows, uh, working with them eventually on their story, mm -hmm. but also knowing uh, what can we do in terms of the institution being a little more friendly than just saying, because mm. if you phone in, for example, when can I visit my son or my daughter, they'll tell you the official day and, and uh, afternoon that you have to pl plan for. Right. Uh, whereas most institutions, if the chaplains would come in and say, this is from outer province, I have contact with the parents, can we arrange something special? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and so we can have two visits in two days. Right, yeah. Uh, and sometimes there's an apprehension from the parents or the wives to come. Uh, what's it like? I've never been there before. So I yeah. can actually greet them. I can offer to sit in with them. Uh, maybe even sit in a room instead of having a screen and a telephone. And, because that's not really warm or connecting. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's an important point you raised there. The, yeah. you, the chaplaincy uh, 
it could be described in some respects as a ministry of, of presence to yeah. people, yeah. but also building bridges with the family and yeah. so on and so forth. We think of uh, priests in prison sacramentally uh, saying Mass, uh, administering the sacraments. Uh, yeah. uh, you yourself have been involved in, in Holy Communion, yeah. giving out to, to inmates and yeah. so on. Yeah. And all of that's extremely important, and there's a great uh, hunger on the part of many inmates for the sacraments, yeah. including confession. Yeah. As a layperson, yeah. you're at the very core of this, though. This ministry of presence is building yeah. bridges yeah. with people, yeah. Uh, yeah. which is so so very important in the life of the inmates themselves. Yeah. Well, and when you meet them one to one, uh, when you have a church service, that's a little more formal. It has its way of proceeding yes and especially in the province uh, our custody places are, are holding far more men or women in custody and there's a lot of movement so we don't get to like the federal jail may be able to have visitors or volunteers stay afterwards and and they can have a cup of coffee uh, in medium security the family maybe can bring in a meal yeah and they can have a meal but in the province you're really concerned of where the movement is. But, but with the enemies, fellas, you can visit them and you can find out more of that story. Mm -hmm. And then you can actually invite the pastors to come in or you can have those connections to work on particular issues. Guys will tell their stories and I'll say at a certain point, uh, reflecting with their words back to them, but can you tell me the difference between shame and guilt? And they'll look at you, and um, they're they're the same. And I'll say, well, I, that's what I used to think. Uh -huh. But shame is when you feel uh, yeah, you're unworthy. It's right. no, I'm no good anymore. Low self-esteem, yeah. all and, that. And I said, and that's a lie. Yeah. Uh, guilt is what you did was wrong, or what you said was wrong. Mm -hmm. or, or you failed to do, <laughs> failed to right, say. Right, right. But you're not wrong. Interesting. So to me, that's a very yeah. deep sacramental moment to, yeah. to say, I'm here to remind you, you and I are still beautiful mm -hmm. in the eyes of the one who made us. Right, yeah. Uh, God will never abandon mm -hmm. what God has created. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a, an indigenous expression. We're relatives. So, so to, to not get religious with the guy, but, yeah. but to work now on, mm -hmm. we have to catch ourselves saying, mm -hmm. oh, there you go again, you're no good. Right, exactly. Do you think, Greg, that uh, this is really common among inmates, the sense of low self-esteem and shame? Do you find it that, oh. that that's quite, uh, you know, not, not yeah. just among people necessarily in prison, yeah. but among the inmates you've encountered? Oh. Yeah, I, and uh, the idea of... Um, being not valued or being abused or not wanted or not mattered. Yeah. Uh, when I have stories with some of the guys telling what happened to them, you carry that the rest of your life. The rest of your life, yes. And and if it doesn't get resolved, mm -hmm. and you're not going to bring it up because everybody's supposed to be proud of their family, mm -hmm. proud of your mom. Uh, yeah. And But with a chaplain, to have the time to see and mm -hmm. to just accept the story. Right. And in the federal, uh, in the provincial system, you're a staff in the province of Manitoba. It varies from province to province. Some right. place chaplains are staff provincially, other places they're outside ministers come in for a service or, or maybe to help an individual. Mm -hmm. I can go into any unit in a provincial jail as a chaplain. Unless there's a riot going on. Right, thing, exactly. You know, but, <laughs> but I can go into every unit and I'm seen as a staff member there. Okay. So one of my areas regularly was to go into uh, the punitive area. Uh, guys who could be locked in. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can talk to them and even the officers will say, well, we're only allowed one out. And I say, well, when he's finished, uh, I can wait, mm -hmm. but I can take him up into another room. And they'll say, do you feel safe with him? And I say, yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. But, but tell me, uh, like, you know, um, 
people, th I think, uh, think about the, the prison system itself as yeah. one monolithic thing, but yeah. obviously it's not. Uh, yeah. You talked a bit about the remand center here in, yeah. in, in Winnipeg, and then you're talking about the provincial system, and then yeah. there's also the federal system like Stony yeah. Mountain. Yeah. Is it possible, Greg, just to very, very briefly, just kind of clarify the differences between these three systems? Now, yeah. the federal system is the federal system across the country. The provincial yeah. varies from province to province. Yeah. Remand also probably has yeah. its own peculiarities. Yeah. Yeah. Can you just kind of clarify a little yeah. bit for, for the lay people okay. who aren't familiar with this? Uh, if you're in a, f a federal system, that means you've been sentenced. And then when you're in there, you will get uh, an opportunity depending upon what unit you're in. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're in a protective custody unit or a gang unit or whatever, there's different approaches, of course. Yeah. But otherwise, they're, they're looking forward to, uh, do you want to work on working on your way out, what kind of plans you put in place? Uh -huh. And while I don't have a lot of connection to the federal system, yeah. but I've had some fellows that um, their life and their family life, and they ran three or four businesses, were all successful. Mm -hmm. uh, except they had this one problem. problem that kept going and going until it got to be against the law. Yeah. And they just thought, well, I'm here and uh, I'm not getting any help. Whereas some of them have told me, when I prepared for parole, I thought, yeah, it's like the four different businesses I ran, I, I got a plan. Mm -hmm. Well, when he went to the parole board hearing the first time, they were, they were saying, okay, suppose that first day when you go to such and such a place that doesn't happen, what's your plan? And, and he said, well, I, I said, okay, and I'll get creative, great. Uh, but no, they wanted that down in writing. I see. And they wanted the next plan and the mm -hmm. next plan. Mm -hmm. and, or mm -hmm. one guy told me, I had really good friends out there and I, they were with the business I worked where we made connections. I played mm -hmm. hockey with mm -hmm. them. I can't associate with most of them now. Because one way or the other, they've got a criminal record. Right. I, it, nobody told me that. Yeah. I, I thought, okay, I'll do my Big, time. big change I'll in your private out. life. You, you're, you're, you, know, you don't just get out, mm. you know. In the provincial system... Before you go into the provincial, yeah, you've yeah, got... Yeah. In the federal, you've got uh, what yeah. we used to call the uh, heavy, medium, and, and light, light, light yeah. depending on the nature yeah. of the sentence. And yeah. that. So you get the three different levels there. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and... In the provincial? Uh, in the provincial system, uh, if you're on good behavior, you can get a few days or a few weeks of early release. Okay. Uh, if you come with no resources back to the community, uh, you'll get a bus ticket, maybe five dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, you used to have an appointment with a, a dedicated uh, a social worker. Right. Uh, now it's a day later. And they basically, because they're dedicated to work with uh, prisoners returning and then other special people, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, they ended up saying, well, you've been through this before. It's 2 o'clock. Here's your application. If you want it filled, go find a place and be back by 4. Well, the guys know that. So they, they go to where the friends are. Mm -hmm. And they're living in someone's basement for a few days or weeks or yeah. whatever. Or they're finding a place with somebody who has a place in a, a small house maybe that's in four units and all you get to do is live in your bedroom and share the bathroom. Right. And maybe a friend of yours says, well, you can stay with me for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. So you're sending people, and that's community chaplaincy that I want to be involved in. Yes. A lot of people are being released. If you don't have a family support and accommodations mm -hmm. and you don't have a job to go to. Yeah. Man, the agony and the loneliness and the frustration. And the danger and, of, of reoffending. Reoffending. Coming back in. Meeting, meeting the old friends. Yeah. Uh, uh, transportation is a huge issue. I mean, wait, 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 how, do you how do you go around? You've got no money. Right. And, and so yeah. the idea of saying, can we offer as a church, and that's partly what I'm trying to do. Yeah, we'll get to that in a moment. Yeah. I mean, no money, yeah. no bank account, no credit. Yeah. All these things you take yeah. for granted is not, not in existence. Yeah. And then you've got the remand center. Yeah, okay. How, do you, how would you describe the Remand Center? The Remand Center uh, can, can bring in uh, a, a number of fellows who have already been in, and there's a women's unit in mm -hmm. there too. Uh, it's people who are in a lot of anxiety sometimes because uh, they never thought they'd be back in there, or they never thought they were in there. Uh, 
And because you can walk around, uh, I, I willingly took all day Sunday and Mondays, and I would intentionally go to the units where the newly arrived people were. were. Because if you've never been there before, you're lonely. Like right. you're standing alone. You don't know who to trust. Right. How long How long would a person be in the remand center for? Uh, not a long time. Uh, there's a group that we call them kitchen trustees. They work in the kitchen and become used to mm -hmm. that. So uh, if you're going to be staying there, eventually they'll transfer you, like in Manitoba, to Milner Ridge or to Headingley Correction. Okay. From there you go on uh, to the provincial. You're, you're in the provincial, yeah, because you're waiting for a trial. You yeah. haven't been And then once a trial occurs and yeah. you're given a definite sentence, Two years or more, yeah. Then, then you're in two years or more. Then you're in the federal system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so I did a lot. Of, what I learned in there is a lot of cultural work and a lot of cultural connections. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a fellow in, and he was at a gathering in uh, in in, the, in his uh, ap apartment with a lot of other people from his community, and it got a little louder, boisterous, and stuff. So um, he put an end to it. He, he grabbed the kitchen knife and put it on the table and it stuck in. And uh, everybody quieted down because that's just the culture. If the men get upset, you, put, right. you do that. Brute everybody force. Everybody backs off. But about three minutes later, the doorbell rings and there are a bunch of police officers. Somebody called cops and mm -hmm. because, and, and, and rightly so, I okay. guess. Okay. But when he told me the story, I was able to get in touch with the pastor from his church. Yes. Uh, and and uh, invite him in. We arranged for him to go see the fella. Yeah. But the pastor was able to get the support that this was a cultural issue. Mm. I don't do it in Canada. I told him again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that that was and and so he he got served with assigned with uh, an interim uh, conditions. There you go. You know and. And, but uh, if you're brand new going in as chaplains, without the training and the experience, that's where it's always good to say, okay, early on something happens. What are the things you look to mm -hmm. you normally wouldn't look to? Yeah, and you need um, mentorship. You need to have experienced people who can help you understand well, that. And, and while the story comes to my mind, I had a phone call from a lady uh, in a small community outside of uh, in Winnipeg. Mm -hmm. Uh, she phoned because in her small community, she, her son had done something that everybody in the community knew that they did, mm -hmm. and and she was not going to church because she felt um, everybody knows this, and she, she didn't know what to do. Never been in this, this position before, so she talked to me as a chaplain, mm -hmm. and and so I, I talked with her, and uh, she eventually went back, but. As a parish, if we have someone in the parish who's hurting, I mean, that could be divorce, a separation, a, a child, a, or a mother who has a son. Yeah. Are we going to even have somebody reach out to them? Or do we just continue with our Sunday attendance and our Sunday attenders? Right, and, yeah. Uh, and, and say, just a minute, that's social action, by the before way. It, that, before that's it, social care. Before it snowballs into something really serious, well, or if it's serious, uh, don't abandon her. Mm -hmm. Like she may not have sm spoken. I mm -hmm. can see that. Your 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 son, you know, is getting into drugs. Your son is. He's played hockey before. Or he's done different things, and everybody feels, oh yeah, he's a hockey player, or he's such and such. Mm -hmm. But to be able to say, hey, we know this has happened. I don't know what to say. Just your presence. Or ju just. A, a little word of dropping by or making a phone call. And that's what Pope Francis that's, talks a lot about. Yeah, the, the brother beside you. That's right, the, yeah. The, the, Encounter. That's the story. Yeah. Encountering yeah. ministry of presence yeah. in the parish community. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. so you start spiraling down the hill, yeah. Yeah. it can lead to all kinds yeah. of problems, including, yeah. including yeah. jail yeah. time. Yeah. 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 But, you know, you were at the three dioceses, uh, uh, St. Boniface, Archdiocese of Winnipeg, yeah. And uh, the Archparchy of Winnipeg. Yeah. We talked a little bit about having, uh, and the Jesuits. The Jesuits had a halfway house. I, yeah. what I, I'm using old terminology now, yeah, but yeah. a place for prisoners to come yeah. and to work their way into society. Certain yeah. ones, uh, yeah. uh, uh, Coyote House, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the three dioceses were looking at uh, 
a program, mm -hmm. uh, which was uh, stymied a little bit because of the COVID, yeah. uh, called Good Neighbors. Yeah. And can you yeah. uh, talk a little yeah. bit about uh, the, this yeah. program, Good Neighbors? Because you're yeah. you're you're directing that, uh, Greg. Yeah. Well, the, the the title we came up with uh, is a Good Samaritan story. We, yeah. we are neighbors. Who who are who, who's my neighbor? Right. And um, partly because of the church's protocols. We were getting volunteers to come and going through criminal record checks and training, and then so mm -hmm. how do you relate to uh, people that have returned to the community? And uh, what I like about the question of the Good Samaritan is, uh, and Francis mentions that chapter two for Telly Tutti, the Good Samaritan story. It's, everybody should read that. He was on his way. He had a purpose. He, he was going back home. Mm -hmm. But he's the one who noticed uh, mercy and kindness yes. to give it in the here and now movement, mm -hmm. and to give it generously. I'll I'll, I'll pay whatever you His need time, to the time and, and resources. Time and resources. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So our our uh, effort was to say let's have a community chaplaincy because most of the fellows uh, provincially, especially, and some federally, when they're released. Uh, they have no resources or family or community they can look forward to. Yeah. Okay, and, and have that. And uh, part of that, um, while well, COVID slowed it down quite a bit, mm -hmm. uh, part of that too is I'm now getting uh, spouses or family members phoning me or parents. I'm having someone that was arrested in our family. I got, what do we do? So I often speak to them like refugees who find themselves in a new land. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, the language has changed when you go to courts. Uh, their lawyers will say, well, don't worry, we're working it out. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean it's positive, where some people said, uh, yeah. I'm relaxing more that they said that. <laughs> they're, they're very they're big stress levels. Uh, yeah, and, and so I've met with them, some have phoned me, I, I meet at Kateri if they need a place or we go for coffee, but just so they have a little sense of what they want to do. Uh, in prison, for some of the guys, the way they talked, I said, well, if you want to offer for me to be at court with your family, I can be there. So I've been at court with immigration hearings, I've been at court with other hearings, mm -hmm. and uh, for sometimes the family, I was the only person in court that was under support. Okay. Uh, yeah, rightly, a number of people came for the victim support, mm -hmm. but when decisions get made by the judge, one way or the other, one side or the other has lots of emotions and they're let loose. And yeah. that's very hard on the other side too. Mm -hmm. They may be released, relieved, if the, depending on how it goes. Uh, but to know that I as a chaplain were there. Every chaplain organizes its spiritual care and its chaplaincy. Every prison organizes it a little differently. And the chaplains have a say on it if they can think of how to do it. Right. In Henningley, we had a chapel service when I was there every unit, every week. But that became offering then a Christian focus and a way, time away for those who want to come. And uh, I spoke with uh, Father Mark uh, just last week. Yes. In the federal. Who was doing the there, federal there, chaplaincy, chaplaincy work. work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because sometimes it would be a fellow coming and saying uh, uh, to after the service. Uh, I, I never go to chapel, uh, chaplain, but the guy said this chaplain is different. So whatever the guys were bringing back to him, mm -hmm. he felt, hey, it's time to talk to this guy right, and have right. a chat. Yeah. But with you, as you're saying, with the good neighbors, um, you know, you're yeah. trying to number one be friend, yeah. be support, yeah. and and avenues uh, to help people to reintegrate into society in a positive way as much as yeah. possible, including if those that want to reconnect with a parish church. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we I think we were using a couple of churches as our venue, right, uh, yeah. Carrie? Kateri Parish, St. Kateri Parish was one of them. Was it Holy Eucharist was the other over in? Well, Holy Eucharist was, uh, we were starting out initially with two sites. Uh, uh, and at this point, it's, it's Kateri is, is, would be the one site. Yes. So right now we're, we're going on Tuesday nights at St. Kateri. And it's 6.30 to 7.30. They can stay a bit longer. But that's for guys who may still have some curfews. 
mm -hmm. whether that's provincial or federal. And uh, anybody who comes basically has to walk there. Right. So if you're over uh, in Central Park or you're over mm -hmm. in Elmwood, uh, what's the chances of walking all the way over to Kateri in mm -hmm. the north end? And Very that, difficult to, to read, to, to reintegrate. Meet once a month and yeah. have a social gathering. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the way, anybody's welcome to come. Uh, just last week, we had a little activity, I call it Jeopardy, but you have different color cards and it turned it over. And the one you got may say something like, uh, if you could have a fantastic meal mm -hmm. and money wasn't an issue, what would that meal be? Uh, Ways and, of, of and, getting and, into and the getting conversation. Into positive stuff. And one thing opens and, up to another area of conversation. Yeah, and, and, and it's, but it's positive. Uh, well, it, you know, Greg, you know, it's yeah. interesting because, uh, you know, you, you, you kind of, you have a, you have a million stories um, and uh, a lot of experience in this area. And we can see that life in the prison, the role of a chaplain, what happens afterwards, what are some of the challenges but if I, if I was to, um, and you, know, you mentioned volunteers too, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the federal system, the provincial system, you know, is God, what is God saying in your heart? We need volunteers to work mm -hmm. in the prison ministry. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah. I've seen this uh, firsthand in the federal system. Yeah. It's very positive for sure. Yeah. Um, if you were to zero in, Greg, mm -hmm. on what you think is the essence of the prison ministry, mm -hmm. like the value of it, the importance mm -hmm. of it, mm -hmm. not only in the church, but on the mm -hmm. human level. Mm -hmm. What would you say it was? Mm -hmm. uh, I'd say the importance of it is you're meeting someone in the here and now present moment who's got a deep feeling of to whom do I matter. Like, so if you, if you want to go to prison and do a chapel service, uh, or just just come with a group and let the chapel and run the service. Uh, my only invitation would be uh, leave some time for a little bit of visiting, uh, even just five minutes at the end. Uh, provincially, we don't need a lot of time. Maybe Brandon does, <laughs> but the path they're a little different. But uh, one of the fellows told me he was surprised that one of the volunteers came back and uh, just greeted him on the way in and said, "Hey, Mike, how's your week been?" He didn't think anybody volunteering once a week would even remember his name. Okay. That, that just, just had Mixed. that. Uh, I've had a couple people come in and they came regularly to sing and they were young couples and it was a good in singing. Uh, but uh, they told me on the way in that um, the wife and uh, the couple, they just had a brand new baby girl. And it's the second one. So I gave them a little heads up and I said, uh, I, I'd like you to share your joy and delight with these guys. And, well, I'm not sure what we're to say. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, I'm here. Well, it was just so great to have a young couple there sharing their delight. He was there for the birth of the baby. Mm -hmm. And it, it had various uh, reactions with the fellows. It, like, on the one hand, the fellows, some fellows were saying to me after, I, I missed my children. I haven't seen them for 14 years. Right. But another guy said, uh, I, I, I was about to cry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I, I, because I miss my daughter so much. Right. So, so to me, those are sacramental moments yeah. where, where the, 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 the Christ in them, they wouldn't call it Christ, but I would say the mm -hmm. Christ is in every one of us. That's, mm -hmm. To me, that's the radicalness I got out of the prison ministry. Yes, the for sure. The radicalness of Christ right. is, yeah. is in every human being you meet. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, I, I would say, I've been thinking a lot, and this is going to be viewed by a lot of people on Holy Week. Just take a few things. Who, 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 who is one's denial? Who, uh, how did Jesus approach people mm -hmm. during this time? I heard something about trials occur during Holy Week. <laughs> Uh, betrayals of her. Yeah. Uh, uh, just look at who received Holy Communion on Thursday night. Mm -hmm. uh, Matthew says Jesus' first word to his betrayer, who Jesus said to the others, he's going to betray me, my friend. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Jesus was going through tons of emotions in the here and now journey of his, 
arrest, his betrayal. Mm. But he just had the truthfulness of that. Right. You know, and and, and the radicalness of how he lived that. It's um, a good thought yeah, on the yeah. verge of Holy Week. Yeah. You know, to mm. reflect on, you know, and what I'm hearing you saying, mm. you know, one of the, the keys here is the friendship. You know, yeah. establishing friendship and trust yeah. between people. It's, it, it's person intense in prison ministry, yeah. but also to help lift somebody up. You know, this low self-esteem, a sense of shame, yeah. to, to, to kind of find a way of encouraging and restoring human dignity because it all flows, it all flows from there, wow. basically. And the prison ministry is, is very key in in that you know yeah. um, so I think that's a, I think our conversation today Greg is helpful yeah. because um, you shared a lot about your experiences in prison ministry yeah. uh, we have ministry in the remand and federal yeah. and provincial yeah. there and we need more yeah. uh, and especially volunteers so this yeah. is a vocation this is yeah. Uh, yeah. an important yeah. way of becoming involved some of our deacons are involved yeah. in prison ministry yeah. Yeah. as well so but I want to thank you, Greg. Uh, I'd love to have a chat for the next hour or so about this and the <laughs> stories, but all things kind of come to a yeah. conclusion. Yeah. But I, I really appreciate you taking the yeah. time oh, today and coming down and, uh, and sharing with all of us a little bit about prison ministry, uh, some of the stories, the intensively personal nature of it, and the importance of prison ministry in the church, within our diocese, our local church, but also, how is the ministry of presence in our own parish communities, especially those who are alienated and those who are in need of some lifting up? We all yeah. need lifting up yeah. every now and again. Yeah. So thank you, Greg. Yeah. Yeah. People are much appreciated. Me. Yeah. It's, yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you very I much. Yeah. And thank you for turning, tuning in this uh, Friday morning for a Friday report. And I pray that all will go well with your families and may God be with you as we prepare for a truly Holy Week. The Lord be with you, and may God bless and keep you always, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.